Welcome back to the next session in the Flight Lecture series, where I'll be introducing the topic of longitudinal static stability, which is quite important during the en route and cruise phases of flight. So some of the terms that you, s you see on the screen in front of you are consistent with what you'll find in, say, mass and flight stability and control. A couple of things that I wanted to, to mention to you were for example, the rate of change of the coefficient of moment with respect to aircraft under attack, or DCM and D-alpha, can be also represented as CM-alpha. So you'll tend to see that this is represented or used interchangeably uh, with each other throughout um, not only say Nelson or other textbooks, but also in, in this flight series. So during en route or cruise phase of flight, the forces and moments acting on the aircraft can be primarily represented as thrust, drag, lift and weight. So during straight and level flight, when there's no accelerations on there, thrust should equal drag and aircraft lift should equal its weight. If I was to take, say, the lift term, and expand it out a little bit further and say the total lift produced by the aircraft is the sum of the lift from the wing and the lift from the tail. Now even though the lift from the tail is quite comparatively smaller than the lift produced by the wing, the moment produced about the center of gravity could potentially be say have a larger effect. Uh, due to its distance from the center of gravity. One of the terms that you'll commonly come across in flight mechanics is that the concept of trim. An aircraft is said to be in trim when the forces and moments acting on the aircraft during straight level flight are equal. So this not only means that lift is equal to weight and that thrust equals drag, but also the sum of all the moments due to these forces total up to equal zero. The moments acting on the aircraft are dependent on where the location of the center of gravity is. So you have to keep in mind that as you fly, the center of gravity will move as, say for example, the skill burn. That would mean that the moments acting on the aircraft during flight will also change, which means that the aircraft would have to be trimmed again after, well, periodically trimmed during the flight. So each moment can be calculated as that force, so for example lift, multiplied by its displacement from, from the center of gravity. Each of these moments can then be aggregated together, and once they're aggregated together, you can determine whether or not the aircraft is in trim, or what actions need to be taken in order to trim the aircraft. You can also determine the static stability of the aircraft. And one of the most important terms in order to work, the stati work out the static stability is determining the stick fix neutral point. These terms will be discussed in a bit more detail in the, in the next section, but for this part, the main focus is calculating the, the total moment acting on the aircraft. Now the forces that are on, on the aircraft should be due to the main wing, so for example lift and drag. Lift and drag forces also due to the tail frame. So lift and for drag forces due to the fuselage. And then there could be also thrust forces from the propulsion unit. Here, for the sake of simplicity, we'll neglect the fuselage and lift and drag. So we'll say that we'll consider them to be negligible. We'll also assume that the thrust is in line with the center of gravity, so it won't pr produce a moment. So the total pitching moment for the aircraft, say in a long signal sense, can then be calculated by taking the moment produced by the main wing and aggregating it with the moment produced by the tail to get an approximation of the total moment acting on the aircraft. The most common way of 
of working with with uh, force and modern values is to convert them into non-dimensional forms. This require this allows you to normalize. So, for example, say your flight test beam was done in a wind tunnel. Those values can be converted into non-dimensional form and then scaled up to an aircraft at a larger size. So the way to normalize the terms is to say, for example, take the coefficient of lift. That can be calculated by taking the lift force and then dividing it by the aerodynamic, the dynamic pressure, sorry, um, which is half times the air density multiplied by speed squared and also dividing by the wing area uh, as represented by S. In order to non find the non-dimensional for the moment, it's the same process, but you also divide by T bar, which is your mean aerodynamic chord length. So taking a lift curve, so coefficient of lift, so once you've normalized the lift into a coefficient into coefficient form, CL versus alpha is Normally a graph where there's a period of time where the lift increases linearly with the increase in angle of attack until you reach the stall angle, then there's a sudden drop in the amount of lift that the wing can produce. The linear part can be approximated as a component of the y-intercept, so CL0, so this is the coefficient of lift value at zero angle of attack, and then having a gradient, CL alpha, or used interchangeably, DCL and D alpha. And by taking those two terms, the coefficient of lift at any angle of attack before stall can be calculated as CL naught plus CL alpha multiplied by alpha. CL max is the value that you can use, if you like, to represent the maximum lift produced by the wing before it stalls. And in a similar way, a coefficient of moment graph can be produced. So CM versus alpha, which again, the y-intercept, CM naught, so the coefficient of moment at an angle of attack of zero, and then the gradient term, CM alpha, or DCM and D alpha. Now reading a CM versus alpha, alpha graph is slightly different to a CL versus alpha graph. Here, say if we take the most simple scenario, we start looking at trim points. So at a trim point where regardless of what angle of attack you're at, CM is equal to zero. So if CM equals zero, it means that the aircraft, assuming it's in level and unaccelerated flight, it's operating in a state of trim where it's balanced. So if the pilot was to take their hand off the stick, the aircraft would continue to fly straight and level. In this state, if the point where, as interpreted in the graph, is a relatively low angle of attack, which implies that the aircraft is traveling at a higher speed. If I was to shift it, I'm still in a state of trim, but in this case, the aircraft is traveling at, at a high angle of attack. And in this case, that implies that the aircraft is at a lower speed. In, if I was to move away from the trim, anything where you have a positive coefficient of moment means that it is essentially a nose up moment, which results in the aircraft becoming unstable. A nose down moment, on the other hand, would mean that if there was an upward disturbance, the aircraft would experience uh, a restoring moment. So before we move ahead and start looking at calculating the pitching moment contributions for the wing and the tail, I thought a good idea would be to revisit static stability and the main reason I wanted to go through this was to show how this links with the weight and balance work from the first session into the static stability analysis which will happen in the subsequent sessions. So again the key the key concept here with stability and we'll be focusing on static stability is the initial tendency for an aircraft to return to a sta state of equilibrium after it experiences some sort of disturbance. 
So using using the visualization, static stability again is the initial return. Neutral stability is somewhat of an imaginary point on the aircraft. If it did experience a disturbance, that the aircraft would no longer have the restoring force if assuming the CFG had moved to this point, which we ref usually refer to as the stick fix neutral point, and that the aircraft would almost hang in the air at that point. And static instability is essentially once the center of gravity moves any further behind that point where the aircraft becomes neutrally stable and uh, it essentially doesn't have the restoring force so it, its initial tendencies to actually move away from, from equilibrium. So some of the assumptions that take are taken into account are for example that if we're just looking at the longitudinal plane of symmetry that the aerodynamic forces acting on the aircraft are symmetrical about this plane. So we wouldn't be considering any any roll for moments for example. There's no net forces outside the longitudinal plane and that all forces such as for example lift, drag, must lie on the longitudinal plane. So again the three terms that we'll be most focused on are static stability, whether the aircraft is neutrally stable and whether it's statically unstable. So coming back to the first session where we looked at the weight and balance, the rearward limit as, a, as an approximation, if the center of gravity moves any, would, any further than that rearward limit which on this graph is approximately 47 and a half inches behind the datum, the aircraft wouldn't have the restoring force, so it would become statically unstable. As long as the center of gravity is ahead of this point for a Cessna C172, it can be considered to be statically stable. So a couple of terms that will will come across further on are stick fixed. Stick fixed essentially means that the elevator stays in place. So if it is even if it is deflected, it would it would stay at that point. But um, stick fixed just refers to the pilot holding onto the stick at all at all times. Stick fixed neutral point, on the other hand, is the location on the aircraft. If the CFG was ever to move to that point, the aircraft would become neutrally stable. Now, XNP and XCG, in in most textbooks, when you see it, they're both taken as a relative distance of the center of gravity behind the leading edge of the aircraft wing. So the difference that takes place here would be, so for example what we calculated in the weight and balance, the center of gravity is taken from a datum and XCG is that same distance but as you can see XCG is going to have a smaller value because it's taken from the leading edge of the wing. In order to do the conversion you'll, you'll see that the distance between the firewall or the datum to the leading edge is given in the, the pilot's, op pilot's operating handbook and the value is 25.9 for a Cessna 172. In order to calculate XCG, it's a, it's a fairly simple conversion but it's essentially taking the datum minus by 25.9 and the division by 12 is really just to convert back from inches into, into the imperial term which is required for XCG which is in feet. So in order to relate XNP and XCG, again, if the center of gravity is behind the neutral point, the aircraft is statically unstable. If it's ahead of that point, it's statically stable. And at when the, the center of gravity is sitting at XNP, then the center of gravity is interchangeable with uh, XNP. In order to relate the, 
the static stability of an aircraft from the weight and balance graph across to a coefficient of moment versus angle of attack graph. For the aircraft to be neutrally stable, um, so what that means is regardless of where regardless of the angle of attack that the aircraft is at it would always experience a a nose up moment and that nose up moment would be constant the entire time it would be the exact same amount of nose up moment required for the aircraft to stay at at that exact location the entire during during flight if the aircraft is statically unstable the way that this graph can be read is along at lower angles of attack you have a lower nose up moment but there will always be a low a nose up moment at lower speeds or higher angles of attack you'll have an even higher nose up moment so regardless of at whatever point the aircraft is at it will always experience a nose up moment when the aircraft is statically stable Initially at lower angles of attack, it will experience a nose up moment, but at higher angles of attack or low speeds, it will actually experience a nose down moment. So if at a lower angle of attack, the aircraft experiences a nose up moment, the aircraft will actually increase and have a higher angle of attack then it will experience a nose up moment, go down. At, again, at a low angle of attack, it will experience another nose up moment. So it will continue to always have that stability characteristic. And in mathematical terms, that definition is at the y-intercept when the angle of attack is equal to zero if CM0 is greater than zero or if it's positive that means that the aircraft can be trimmed for a positive angle of attack and that's quite important because in order to for the aircraft to produce lift and sufficient lift it needs to be able to be trimmed at a positive angle of attack in terms of producing a restoring moment uh, CM alpha or the gradient of the line needs to be negative in order to have that uh, inbuilt stability where at low angles of attack you have a nose up moment but at high angles of attack you have a nose down moment so in order to define a statically stable aircraft those two characteristics um, are quite important